it together, okay, church, this morning? Because he is here, amen? Just open up your hearts this morning. You are here, moving in our midst. I worship you. I worship you. You are here, working in this place. I worship you. I worship you. Every voice. You are here, moving in this place. I worship you. I worship you. You are here, working in this place. I worship you. I worship. You're working, even when I don't feel it, you're working. 
хранить Луч среди мрака, мой Бог, это Ты, мой Бог. Чудесный, чудесный путь и водитель, это хранить Луч среди мрака, мой Бог, это Ты, мой Бог. Это Ты, мой Бог, это Ты, мой Бог. Это ты мой Бог, это ты мой. Подними руки, скажи. Это ты мой Бог, это ты мой Бог, это ты мой Бог, это ты мой, это ты.
завесы нет, раскрыта дверь, я в тронный зал бегу скорей спасить, склоняюсь пред тобой. Завесы нет, раскрыта сердцем Бог, работай с нами сейчас. Двигай горы проблем, двигай горы забот. Ты Бог, святый святый Бог, святый святый Бог. Пусть придет твоя слава на это место больше. Пусть познает тебя, что только... 
только ты есть Бог, пусть познает тебя. Да познает, что ты есть Бог, великий святой, великий святой, великий святой, способ мой, великий святой.
Hallelujah. Can we worship you? Can we worship him as he deserves to be worshipped? As we praise him as the King of Kings deserves to be praised. Come on church, let's lift up our hands. Let's give him the glory and honor and praise. Hallelujah, Jesus. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. So Lord, we come into your presence. And we thank you that we already have the victory in Jesus Christ. Come on and just proclaim it. I already have the victory in Jesus Christ. I have the victory. Come on, sing it out. I have the victory. Oh, let all of hell, let all everything know that I got the victory in Jesus Christ. Oh, I got the victory. Oh. Hallelujah. Victory over any stronghold. Victory over any stronghold. Victory over any kind of addiction. Victory over any kind of sin. Any kind of chains that bind me down. I have the victory. I have the victory in Jesus. Oh, at the sound of your name, every knee shall bow and every tongue shall proclaim that Jesus Christ is Lord. Hallelujah. So Father, we just thank you. We thank you for your presence. We thank you that you have given us the power and authority. We are not alone. You are with us. You are with me. I am not alone, Jesus. I am not alone, Jesus. Overwhelmed by the weight of your sin, Jesus is calling. You are calling, Lord. Have you come to the end of yourself? Do you thirst for a drink from the well? Jesus is calling. Now let's lift up our voices, let's pray in your own language. Just begin to pray, just begin to lift up the name of Jesus. Shakalamana slava, hallelujah. Pray, pray church, pray, hallelujah. Begin to praise God Almighty, begin to worship, begin to proclaim of His goodness, repeat His promises over you, repeat His promises over your children. We praise you, Lord. Hallelujah. For yours is the kingdom. For yours is the glory. For yours is the power. Forever and ever. Hallelujah. For yours is the kingdom. For yours is the power. For your hallelujah. It is all yours forever and ever. And everybody shouted amen and amen. Hallelujah. Give God a shout of praise. Give God a shout of praise and glory. Hallelujah. Thank you guys, that was so amazing. Hallelujah. You can sit down, have a seat. While you're sitting down, grab, well, maybe not grab your neighbor, but just say, hi neighbor, I'm so glad you made it today. We're so thankful that uh, many of you tuned in today. May the Lord bless you. Um, and while I just say a few things, the ushers are going to come through, they're going to come by. And if the Lord has placed it into your heart to give uh, and um, you know about tithing, you know about all of that. So I'm not going to go through it today. Uh, but what a blessing it is. The Lord is expanding our territory. 
the Lord is expanding our borders and I am so glad to be a part of the kingdom of God hallelujah that cannot be shaken listen the kingdoms of the world are shaken the kingdoms of the world they come and go but the kingdom of God cannot be shaken and you and I are a part of that kingdom hallelujah give can somebody give God a shout of praise and glory hallelujah I'm so glad of what God is doing, not just here on Sundays. And, uh, you know, he's expanding our level of influence all around the world. Those of you who are tuning in and watching, we're getting people uh, speak to us through uh, uh, Facebook and Instagram and, and YouTube how uh, uh, this ministry is a blessing. And I'm so glad that God is working and that God is in the house. Hallelujah. I am so glad that God's word is reaching to the end of the world. Hallelujah. He, it does not matter to him distances. It does not matter to him any kind of barriers, country barriers. The word of the Lord is powerful. Hallelujah. Praise be to God. And I'm so glad of what God is doing on Wednesdays through uh, the online prayer I'm so glad when we meet together on Fridays uh, uh, as a cell group, God is mightily coming down in power and in glory. Hallelujah. Church, it's time that we don't only talk about it, but we begin to walk in power and authority of God. Come on, somebody. It's time we don't just have a label, but we truly are filled with the power of the Holy Spirit. We're just not talking, but we're walking. Hallelujah. Come on, somebody. Are you ready? Are you ready? Are you ready? Hallelujah. So let's just go because, you know, with this whole quarantine, there's so many things that we didn't have a chance to do. And we're going to attempt to get it all done in one Sunday. So we're, listen, listen, God is good. Do you know that today? Do you know that God is good in, in great times and God is good in tough times? God is good during COVID-19. He's good whenever. Hallelujah. My God is a good God. Hallelujah. Praise be to Jesus. It's interesting that in my house and probably in your house, you have doors and windows. More than likely in your house with those doors and windows, you have locks. And, and they're deadbolts or, you know, they, they have some sort of locking mechanism. And we do that. We lock our homes. We lock our car doors. We lock our windows because we want to protect our family and we want to protect our belongings. Does anyone know what I'm talking about this morning? We do that because we want to protect ourselves from damage we want to protect ourselves from theft now theft is someone taking something unlawfully that does not belong to them but let me tell you we do all of that in the physical but there is so much theft and robbery going on in the spiritual I want to repeat that one more time we do so much in the physical to protect ourselves and our belongings but the enemy is out there to kill, steal, and destroy. And we cannot be ignorant of what the enemy is doing. So I want to talk to you about getting stuff back that the enemy has taken from you. Hallelujah. The Bible talks about that we should be on guard. The Bible also talks about that if the enemy gets it, you and I can get it back. Glory be to God. Did you know that Jesus Christ left the glory of heaven to come and to get his creation back? Glory be to God. And so that same thing, the Bible says that he came from heaven. He died for you and I so that we would come back into his kingdom. Come back into his family. You and I are brothers and sisters in Jesus Christ. It does not matter where you're from. It does not matter what level financially you stand. You are my brother. You are my sister. We are all bought with the blood of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Praise be to God. 
we have to realize that the thief takes things that are of value. The thief will not come in and grab your empty water bottle. Are you hearing me today? The thief is not breaking into the bank to get empty bottles of water from the trash can. The thief is breaking in because he knows there is something valuable there. He knows that somewhere underneath your mattress, you're hiding something valuable. So he's going to go in under there and he's going to grab whatever you got. And so the enemy is looking to steal something valuable. I want to tell you that you are valuable in the eyes of God. I want to tell you that you have been bought with the valuable, with the precious blood of Jesus Christ. And when God looked at you, even though we were all in sin, but the Bible says that he so loved you. Tell your neighbor God loves you. Tell your neighbor he cares for you. That he sent his one and only son Jesus Christ so you will not perish but have everlasting life. Isn't that wonderful? The Bible says that he cleansed you with his blood so that you would become a temple for the Holy Spirit. Don't you know that your body is a temple for the Holy Spirit? Don't you know that? Don't you know that God's blood has cleansed you so that he would come into you? Oh, so that you would be going from glory, from glory to glory, from image to image. He is working in you. He is working through you. Somebody has to shout, glory God, glory Jesus, hallelujah. And you are valuable. He has placed that resurrection power. Don't you know that the same power that lifted Jesus up from the dead, when Jesus still was in the tomb, the enemy was celebrating. But what the enemy forgot, that Jesus Christ has said he will die. But on the third day, he would rise back to life. And the Bible says that that same power lives inside of you and me. That's just say, I have resurrection power. I have resurrection power. Hallelujah. You and I have unlimited access to heaven's provision. You and I, we have unlimited access to heaven's provision. Never ever do you have to say to anybody, I can't help you brother. I can't help you sister. Because you have access to heaven's provision. And even though you might not be, be able to give what they want, but you be able to give what they need. Hallelujah. And so whatever you need, the Bible says that he has blessed you with every spiritual blessing from heaven. Hallelujah. Can, can, do you hear that this morning? The Bible says that he has blessed you. Say he has blessed me with every spiritual blessing blessing of heaven hallelujah i have it you have it praise be to god that i have the access to all of heaven's provision and so the enemy does not want you to 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 operate in those blessings the enemy knows that god has entrusted you with time he has entrusted you with talents he has entrusted you with treasures let me repeat that one more time. <coughs> God, that was not COVID-19. I'm good. <laughs> God has entrusted you. Listen to this. God has entrusted you with time, with talents, with treasures. I want to underline that he has entrusted you. He has given it to you to manage and not to own god has given you time talents and treasure to manage and not to own there are yours to manage and not to own and so sometimes we're like oh this is my time oh no it's god time he gave it to you to manage oh it's mine it's me it's mine. it is god's it's god's blessing over you so you would steward over it now that will change some things in our life. 
That will change things because when there is a need, we say, oh God, I know I had some plans, but it's not my time. It's your time. Are you with me? When there is a need, a situation, and God has given us some treasure, and we say, oh God, it's, hey, I'm just, I'm just managing this stuff. It is for your kingdom. It's for your expansion. I'm just managing. I don't own it. Can I get an amen up in here? Come on. I don't own it. I just manage it. So it begins to change the way we do, the way we think. And listen, the enemy wants to steal your time. He wants to steal your abilities, your talents. He wants to steal your treasure. So you will not be expanding the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. But let me tell you, the enemy also wants to steal your joy. The enemy wants to steal your peace. The enemy wants to steal your children. They, he wants to steal your future. Because he knows if you're thinking three to four generations, he knows that the kingdom of God is going to be expanding even greater. So he knows if he can mess you up, he can mess the next generations up. Are you with me? You see, the enemy has a strategy. The enemy doesn't just wake up in the morning and he's like, whoa, let's see what I can do. The enemy has a strategy. And listen, the Bible says that we, you and I should have a strategy. Who builds a tower and doesn't calculate how much resources they have? You remember that parable. He says, who goes to war against the enemy and doesn't calculate the soldiers and the strength of the army? So we have to have a strategy mother and dad I want to urge you to have a strategy for your family I want to challenge you to start thinking about if Jesus doesn't come what is my family lineage going to look like 100 years in the future what is my family name go to stand for? What are they going to say? What are they going to write about me? hundred years past, how? What is my picture going to look like? We have to be thinking about three to four generations ahead. Think about it, church. We can't just thinking, be thinking about the here and now. That's what the builder that was building on the sand thought. You know, if, if I begin to build on the stone, if I begin to, on the rock, there's so much time to spend. I got to work extra hard. So I'm just going to build on the sand. Now that's an easy way out. I'm just thinking about my feelings. I'm just thinking about right here and right now. But let me tell you, the Bible says the one that builds on the stone, the storm will come, the waters will come, and that house will still be standing. Hallelujah. So I want to challenge you to start building your house on the rock that is Jesus Christ. Give God a glory. Hallelujah. The Bible says in 1 Samuel chapter 30, it says that David and his men went away, walked away from the base, from the camp where all of the family was. The Bible talks about that David and his men, mighty men, had a wives and they had children and they had livestock. But they went away. They had something else in mind. There was something out there that they wanted. So they left the camp. I want to teach you a principle that more than likely you already know. But many times what we leave, we can lose. What we leave, we can lose. Many times what we leave, we can lose. And so the Bible says in 1 Samuel chapter 30 that when David and his men left Ziglag, the enemy came in. I want to tell you, fathers, you cannot be somewhere else when you're building a family. 
Fathers, you can't be somewhere around, somewhere else while your family is growing up. Because if you're somewhere else, the enemy can come in and begin to do chaos in the family. It's time that we man up in the church of Jesus Christ. It's time that we understand that we have a place in the kingdom of God, that we have a place in our family, and we can't run away, we can't walk away, we can't be excused. Your wife, your children, they need you in the house. Hallelujah. Come on, somebody. And the Bible says that all of the men left, and when they left, the enemy came. You know, the Bible talks about the prodigal son. He left the father's house. And he went on and he spent all that he had. And let me tell you, there is never success in sin. Only the pig pin. That rhymes. There is no success in sin. Only the pig's pin. Sin will always bring you to the end. Sin will always mess you up. I don't know how many times do we hear this because I know many times we don't li like to talk about sin. But the truth is that you can never make sin work. It will always bring you down to the pig's pin. Always. We can't be successful living in sin. And that's what happened when the young son, he left the father's house. We can't leave the presence of God. Church, we can't leave the presence of God. Yes, we can, we can go through the cycles. We can go through the motions. We can try to make something work. But we need the presence of God in our churches. We need the presence of God in our families. We need the presence of God in this country. Hallelujah. We need you, Jesus. We cannot leave because there is a real danger of losing. So church, we have to begin to dig deeper. We have to worship deeper church. We have to pray harder. We have to praise higher. Come on somebody. It's not time to chillax and relax. It's not time to see, oh, what's going to happen here? It's not time to be a spectator. It's time to get in into the ball game. The Bible says that we don't wrestle against flesh and blood. Come on, give God a shout. We're not wrestling against flesh and blood. Oh, there is an enemy of darkness out there. And the Bible says, put on your gear. Put on your gear. I think we can do just a little bit better than that. Come on. Can we give God a shout of praise? <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise God. It's important to know you can't leave something because you can lose something. You remember Jesus talks to the church in Revelation. He says, you have left your first love. Do you remember that? Because if we leave something, we're in danger. And the Bible says that if you don't go back to where you lost it, you will lose your influence. Your candlestick will be taken. Your candlestick will fall. And so we have to understand that if we leave, we can lose. We have to understand that principle. It, listen, it's so easy. If we leave our employment we don't receive the benefits of employment. If we leave, and, and I, I have been really struggling with this because my gym has been closed and by the time they've, they opened up now, but by the time I'm freed up, they're already closed. And you know, it's, it's really tough when the gym is closed and it's not working because you know, my eating habits have been a little bit rough lately. I've been trying to get bigger jackets and such. But when you leave, and you know this principle, when you leave good eating habits behind, you can lose good health, right? And so it works the same way. 
Don't leave the Father's house. Don't leave the place where you are ought to be. Don't leave because you are going to lose that peace that is above all understanding. Because we are going to lose that fire right inside of our bones. We're going to lose something, church. And I feel like the church needs to get back to the power of the Holy Spirit. I feel like the church needs to get back to praying in the Spirit. Come on, somebody. I feel like the church needs to get back to miracles. I feel like the church needs to get back to the glorious power of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Let's get back one more time. I don't want to hear stories of how my dad and mom were on fire for Jesus. I want to experience it for myself. I don't just want to hear how the apostles were filled with the Holy Spirit and, and Peter was walking around and his shadow began to heal people and the handkerchief of Paul began to heal people. I want to experience the power of the Holy Spirit. Is there anyone in the house ready for the power of God? <laughs> Hallelujah. And so church, we have to get back to the presence of God. But it's interesting that when David got back to the camp, and this is, this is interesting, when David got back to the camp, the Bible says that he got back. He got back to the place where he was supposed to be, but his family was gone. He got back in the place that he was supposed to be, but all of the livestock was gone. All of his possessions, all of the buildings were burnt down nothing was left and let me tell you that sometimes you have to get things back by battling in the spirit sometimes we come back and the Lord says just like the prodigal son the Lord says here you are here you go and and and, and we but sometimes we have to fight for the things that we lost Sometimes, just as David, the Bible says that David came back and the men and they started crying and weeping. They were so stressed. They were so depressed. They were so broke down from the floor up that the Bible says they were crying until they could not cry no longer. The Bible says that one of, or, or, or the men that were followers of David, that, that loved David, once they were following him and now they're ready to stone David. They're ready to because they're such in despair. There is such pain. I want to tell you there's real pain going on in the world today. There's real pain happening in the world today. I don't want to dismiss it. It's there. It's real. But the Bible says that we don't war against each other. The Bible says that we don't war against flesh and blood. Can I hear an amen here today? We don't fight against David. We don't fight against Mary. We don't fight against Joe. We don't fight against none of them. There is an enemy out there. It's an enemy of darkness. It's the devil. We are in war in a battle with him. Stop fighting David. Put the stone down and get the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. Hallelujah. Put that stone down and let's get back on our knees and say, Jesus, I need you. Hallelujah. Come on. It's time that we start encouraging ourselves in the Lord. The Bible says that the men were out to get David. He's been hearing. They're, they're getting those stones together. They're getting those boulders up. They're ready to get him down. They're ready to stone him. They're ready to kill him. But the Bible says in, in 1 Samuel chapter 30 verse 6, in Russian it's verse 7. He says, but David encouraged or strengthened himself in the Lord. David did not strengthen himself with Jack Daniels. David did not strengthen himself 
with the bottle. Jack Daniels is a whiskey. Just. Daniels did not strengthen himself with a bad relationship. He did not strengthen himself with a needle. He did not strengthen himself with crack cocaine. David strengthened himself in the Lord God Almighty. Hallelujah. Let's get back into the presence of God. The only way we're going to be able to recover what the enemy has taken is getting back to the presence of God and encouraging ourselves in the Lord. The only way you're going to get peace back, oh husbands and wives, the only way you're going to get peace and joy back, teenager, oh grandpa and grandfather and grandmother, is getting back into the presence of God and encouraging yourself in the Lord. And David writes it out in Psalms. He says, oh my soul, why are you downcast? Oh look up, the Lord is your savior. The Lord is your rock. The Lord is your salvation. Encourage yourself in the Lord. <laughs> David, whenever he's confused, whenever he's lost, he goes, hallelujah. He goes, the Lord is my shepherd. And I shall not want. Come on, just say it. The Lord is my shepherd. I might be confused, but I know where to get encouraged. I might be down, but I know where to get encouraged. It is in my Lord, the shepherd. He goes, he takes me to the still waters. He takes me to the green pastures. The Lord is my shepherd. And sometimes we just, listen, every single morning I find more and more I got to encourage myself in the Lord. It's a real battle out there. I'm not just talking about Atlanta traffic. I'm not just talking about issues of there is a spiritual battle that I can sense and feel and I know many of you can sense and feel a spiritual battle is happening a spiritual battle is happening for your family for your for your home for the soul of this country it's happening but church we have to stand up and encourage ourselves in the Lord who can you give God a shout of praise come on can we crack a smile this morning? If you're at home, just smile. Hallelujah. The Bible says that David not just encouraged himself in the Lord, but the Bible says that David went to the priest place and he says, priest, I need your ephod. Now, what is an ephod? Ephod is a piece of clothing that had two stones on it. And the priest used that to gain a specific word, a specific insight for the, the situation that they are in right now. Are you with me here this morning? And so David says, priest, I, I got encouraged in the Lord, but now that I'm strong, now that I'm encouraged, I need direction what to do next. And you see, many of us, we get all pepped up. We get all fired up. But you and I, we need the word for the Lord, for our family, for our place, for our city. For our, we need the word of the Lord. Where do we go next? And so the Bible says that David put that ephod on and he began to ask God, what shall I do? Now, you know that in, in a football game, I know in soccer game, there's a playbook. Can somebody say playbook? Yeah. Now in a playbook, there's rules and regulations. So these are the rules. It doesn't matter what team you're on. It doesn't matter, you know, if you're from the West Coast, East Coast. This is the rule book. And let me tell you, we have the rule book that is the Bible. That is the Word of God. But do you know that when they are playing in the game, can somebody say in the game? When they are playing in the game and they're noticing that the enemy is attacking them and they're noticing they're starting to lose the game, the leader, the quarterback, the coach gets them around and he pulls out the playbook. Now what is the playbook? The playbook follows along the rule book, but it is the playbook for the situation that you are in right now. 
right now here's a situation and here's a word here's a strategy here's a battle plan for this situation and so David says hey I know I know the word of God but I need the word of God for this situation for this problem for this issue right now and what that is called it's called rhema word that is when God begins to speak to your personal when the word of God begins to rise up and speak to your personal situation can somebody say personal situation Lord I know what your word says but I need your word to speak to me right now in my problem Lord I need your word to speak to me in my uh, situation in my chaos in my in my down yeah I'm so confused Lord speak to me and so that's exactly what David does he says Lord speak rhema your your word your your word that I might use right now church we need the rhema word from God we need to hear from him Lord what do I do right now husbands what do we do in our families right now Lord speak to me I need to know what do I need to do right now and God speaks to him he says pursue you're going to catch up and you're going to retrieve it hallelujah God is speaking to his church today don't just sit still don't just sit back but get engaged in the battle you're going to win it you're going to get it back in the name of Jesus Christ hallelujah we need to fight for our families once again we need to get into our prayer closets one more time and begin to pray for those loved ones that have walked away. We need to pray for the prodigal sons and the prodigal daughters. Oh God, oh Holy Spirit, draw them in in the mighty. We need to pray for this country. We need to pray for our churches. We need to pray. Stand up in the gap. Hallelujah. So I just want us to rise up church as the worship band will come on stage we're about to battle we're about to go into battle we're about to fight the enemy the Bible says in Ephesians it says don't give place to the devil are you with me here this morning are you hearing me at home in the car wherever you are the Bible says in Ephesians he says don't give place to the enemy now that word means don't give an opportunity to the enemy you might have closed the door but you might have left the window open and that's all he needs that's all the enemy needs to get in so the Bible says don't give place to the enemy hallelujah keep on watch keep on praying keep on worshiping in the mighty name of Jesus hallelujah and so I just as that we lift up our hands if someone has walked away if someone has left the place where they're supposed to be at can you come back home? Will you come back to the Father's house? You know, I have a cell phone in here just for a few more minutes. I have a cell phone. And it's interesting that my cell phone usually is, is on all the time. My wife, a lot of times she forgets to charge her phone. And when I call, she's like, oh, my phone was dead. But it's amazing. It's amazing what's in this phone. Because when I open my phone, I got a calculator. Anybody has a calculator on their phone? When I open my, it's interesting, this gadget, if I want to know if something's leveled, I just put my phone on something and it shows me that it's leveled, right? If I want to get somewhere, I get on my GPS and my phone shows me the way. Are you getting this today? And so I got so many things I can get connected with somebody. Come on. Are you hearing this this morning? Everything is in this gadget. I got so much. If I never ever need some cash, well, I get on my phone and I get on that app and it gives me some cash in my pocket. So I got everything I need in this phone when I want some Chipotle some Chick-fil-A come on somebody when I'm hungry I type in a few buttons and it says go and get it your food is ready 
But you see, something happens when I don't charge my phone. It dies. And all of these benefits goes away. I feel lost without it. I can't calculate. I can't get anywhere. I can't get me some Chick-fil-A sandwiches. I can't get me some Chipotle burritos. I can't get me some good food. I'm lost. I'm, 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 that's it. When you are disconnected from God, when you, come on, I know you're hearing me. When you are disconnected from God, that is a way to get lost. Come on, somebody. So I want to urge you to get connected with Jesus Christ. I want to urge you to plug in Jesus and get restored, get powered up in the name of Jesus. And so if you need to get connected, I just want to call you. I want to call you right here to the altar. Will you come? Will you grab your husband? Will you grab your son, your daughter? And will you say, oh, me and my family, we will serve the Lord. Will you do that? Will you make that public, that public announcement? I don't care what's happening. Me and my family, we are going to serve the Lord. Oh, I want to see this place filled up with people who are committed, with people say enough is enough. I'm going back to the Father's house. I'm going back. I'm battling. I'm getting it back in the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Let's sing it out. I want to invite you forward. Hallelujah. Now church, we got to go in battle and prayer. We have to lift up our hands and begin to pray. Hallelujah. Devil, my family belongs to the Lord. Come on. Lift up your hands and begin to battle. Begin to battle. Hallelujah. Your harmony is a weapon. Your praise is a weapon. Hallelujah. Begin to pray. Begin to praise. Begin to shout in the mighty name. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Begin to pray for the lost ones. Begin to pray for those who walked away. Begin to pray for the brothers and the sisters. Begin to pray for the lost world. Hallelujah. Jesus. Lift up your hands, church. Pray, 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 pray. Hallelujah. Pray, pray. Jesus Christ, my living Beautiful 
Thank you for the victory at the cross of Jesus. And right now we're going back to the cross. Can we go back to the cross? Let's go back to Golgotha. That's where your victory is. Hallelujah. I feel like the, I feel like the Lord is calling somebody here. He's calling you. He's calling you. If you want to receive Jesus as your personal Savior, today is the day. It's right now. It's not tomorrow. It's never. It, no, it's right now. 